Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. I hope you're having a great day. So, back to business. Um, I want to say that I was I had a conversation with these young men last night, and and they're younger than I am, significantly, like in their late twenties, early thirties. And I'm sitting there and I'm speaking with them, and you know we started talking. I was having my car service, so we started speaking, and um, they asked me about, well, you know, how do I consider how do I how do I do what I do, right? We were talking about my videos and everything. Like, how do you how do I do what I do? And I said, well, I, I started out with all of my kids, love them to death, um, are very busy, and you know my youngest is fifteen, um, and they're all very busy. And they don't have time for me to sit down with them all the time and talk about different things. Well, I have time. They don't have time. I don't have time. They have time. So you know, ships don't necessarily meet, you know, right? So I shoot these videos so that I can share the deeper information that I have and then over dinner or, you know, just hanging out in the house, we can start it we can start chatting about something because we've already been, you know, told about it, right? So they'll drop me notes, things like that. They'll text me, you know, they'll be busy and just boop 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 because we're all doing our research. So back to doing research, you know, for for money and done talking about the other thing, you know, the shiny toy. Um, Mazars Group, they do the audit for a few more than a few crypto firms, including uh, Binance, Qcoin, a few, you know, and a lot of others. Right. And Coinbase, I believe. And they said, you know what? No, we're done. Oh, not Coinbase, Crypto.com. We're done. We're, we're not doing it anymore, everything. And I, I'm sitting back and I'm going, wow. But it shouldn't surprise anybody. It shouldn't. Um, after FTX, everybody that's doing, everybody in that business that's doing auditing is going to freak out and just go, wow, we could be you know pulled to task over this just like their auditors were. So they just said, nope, we're all done. Interesting. Nobody does that with banks and banks almost always have something going wrong. Um, just look, look at look up public records, you know, all kinds of things going on with banks. So that's kind of a big deal, but big deal, but not a big deal at the same time, right? Um, something that I want you to pay attention to, I told you before, I do not play around with Telegram. Well, North Korea, it has been found that North Korea is using a mycelia, what is it, a mycelium wallet clone to disperse viruses to people on Telegram. Stop using that platform. Just stop. I haven't seen anything good happening on that platform. This is a security alert. It's a big security problem. If you're dealing with crypto and you're you know, doing things on, on Telegram, my advice is to cut that out. That's my advice. It can be a bad place. You can wind up doing a bad thing. You could have downloaded that bad wallet. It installs viruses on your machine and Lord knows what happens. But one of them is probably stealing crypto. Gemini, more bad news. Gemini, uh, crypto exchange, obviously, got hit, right, with a phishing attack or a third party vendor of theirs got hit with a phishing attack and exposed email addresses and phone numbers to 5.7 million customers of theirs. That's huge. That's huge. It's not good news. I know I'm smiling, but it's not good news at all. Um, what's next up? Crypto.com, good news, just got licensed to be a payment institution in Brazil. You know, one of the hottest markets on the planet for crypto. That's a big deal. So while everybody's running around with their hair on fire, paying attention to Everything that's going on with FTX and Sam Bankman Freed and all that stupid stuff, other companies are making it happen. They're doing the work. While everybody's running around talking about, oh, crypto's dead, crypto's dead. Okay. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Right? Um, the G20 governments, something else to contemplate. The G20 is out there saying, you know what? We need to crack down on crypto because you know, bad things can happen. Elizabeth Warren, the United States, she wants to she wants to introduce a bill that would basically cripple the crypto industry because, you know, 
rogue nations are doing nefarious things. Have you not looked at traditional finance around the world? If something exists, it can be used for a bad thing the same way it can be used for a good thing. Again, I point to look at how many times banks have been brought to task for money laundering. Um, I'm just saying. The amount of money that has traversed through legal means over the years dwarfs what has possibly happened, possibly happened with crypto. Now, let, let's not be crazy. We know that, you know, money laundering has happened with crypto. It, anything having to do with money, something bad has happened. Okay. But the idea that you would want to cripple a whole industry while not paying attention to another industry, instead of taking a pragmatic approach and saying, we need to put things in place to create guardrails to stop those actions. Instead of let's create bills so that when it already happens, we can go try to point fingers. Like, no, that's not how it works. Start from the beginning. Get people to not do things. Put things in place where you can track things or whatever it is that you feel is good. But take a more pragmatic approach. The knee-jerk reaction to what's going on is ridiculous. Let's not do that. Let's, let's not do that. So Elizabeth Warren, I think you should take many seats. I think you should take some lessons on how crypto actually works, who's using crypto, what is crypto used for, how is it being used, by whom it is being used, and do that. You're not going to stop money laundering. It's going to happen. There are different ways to do it. A lot of different ways. But going after an industry singularly is a stupid move. Take a more pragmatic approach. I expect more from you. You're a smart young lady. Okay? You're very smart. I know that. You know that. Take a pragmatic approach. Don't cripple a whole industry because you think nefarious things are going on. Go get facts. Go learn something about things. Learn how it works. Speak to people that are experts in this space. And then have a pragmatic approach to writing regulations by which you can safeguard the industry. The traditional financial industry is not perfect, but there are guardrails. There are safety nets there. There are ways where you can figure out what happened or, is, or what is happening. Take the time to do it better for this burgeoning industry. Knee-jerk reactions have no place here. That's what I ask. Now, more bad news. Sorry. Silvergate. I reported on Silvergate, what, last week, week before last, something like that. They now have a class action lawsuit against them. The class action, class action says that because of their dealings, with FTX and Alameda, these people feel that they were frauded. I don't know. Now, if it gets any worse for, I mean, Silvergate is a, is, is a bank, publicly traded, or Silvergate Capital is a publicly traded company. If it was to get worse, I think the worst case scenario is um, some type of settlement and then they would be liquidated, liquidated and bought out. That's, that's how I think it would play out. It's not that big of a player. It really isn't. If you look at how much, how much in, in digital asset holdings they had, I don't know. And truth be told, I don't even know. I have to read the, the, read the class action. I don't even know that it's a worthy class action. I really don't. It really depends on how they were handling transactions. That's what I would be paying attention to. So, again, do your own research, dive in, don't pay attention to just the shiny stuff. Pay attention to shiny stuff like FTX, what was going on there, right? Who was involved? 
what kind of money was involved so that you can kind of look at that and go, okay, I'm going to stay away from that. Okay. I would normally go through the numbers right now. It doesn't make sense. Right. I mean, I mean, you know what? Let, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. So boop, boop. we'll start from here. Fear and greed index. A couple of days ago was that it was up as high as 32, I believe. Now it's down to 29. Truth be told, when you're looking at all the way over to that dark orange, over to the orange, that's extreme fear and fear. Until we get out of there, because the next color after that is neutral. Until we get out of that, to me, it's all the same. It's all the same. But there's too much good, there are too many good things that are happening in the space for me to believe that, oh, this is going to be bad. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm kind of like, eh, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know what I mean? Um, Bitcoin, if you look at my band, look at the crosshairs, I have a, a top and bottom for the blue band. I have an inner band, green, right there. And then I have the new low that was set. Okay, this is the old low at 17.6. This is the new low. So we were existing above that 17.6 for a while, and then we steadily declined. A big drop here, decline, big drop, sideways, big drop, and that's what's going on right now. Santa Claus rally for me, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to happen. Also, it's the end of the year, so I think a lot of people are going to be selling those loss leaders. So any kind of crypto, like right now I'm going through and I'm saying, I know I'm taking, I'm in the red for certain holdings that I have, certain digital assets that I have. And I'm making a conscious decision as to which ones I'm willing to sell so that I can take advantage of tax credit, you know, of tax write-offs for this year's, this year's investments. Now come January 1st, I might buy right back in and wait the year to see if it's going to go up. And I'll probably be able to buy in at a better price or whatever. But that's what I'm going to do. And that's what's going on in the stock market. That's what's going on. And I totally forgot about that. That's what's going on in the stock market. And that's what's going on in the crypto market right now. So you have a few things that are going on. Plus, the whole thing with FTX is weighing everything down. But more importantly, you have whales that are actually holding back crypto. And everybody's wondering, well, why would they hold it back? They're holding it back because they're not ready yet. That's why they're holding it back. Just do a little bit of research, just a little bit, okay? Um, let's take a look. Big picture, Ethereum is down to 1,200. You know, Bitcoin is down to 16.8. The happy number for everybody was the, was 17,000. Again, my happy number was never 17,000. It was always the old low, which is 17.6, okay? That's what I'm paying attention to. Right now, everything's down. XRP is down to 36 cents. Hmm. Makes me think. Maybe I should get in on that one. Doge is down to 8.1 cents. I have to say, I'm not interested in Doge. Just not. If you've been following me, you know why. I, I'm just not. I'm not going to bank everything on Sam Bankman. For, I mean, not on uh, Elon Musk, who's totally into destroying two companies he's well on his way to destroying uh twitter and by dumping you know billions of dollars in tesla stock he's well on his way of destroying that too just get a new ceo i mean what has he really built everybody's been telling him he's a smart guy he's the richest man in the world well he was the richest man in the world um i don't know that he's actually done anything He's, he's been able to invest well, but I don't know that he's actually done anything. I saw an interview with him and he was like, oh, I could build a better PayPal. And it's, and then the interviewer was like, oh, but you, you already built PayPal. And he was like, yeah, I know. No, he did not build PayPal. PayPal was built by two guys that I also don't like, Peter Thiel and Sev, Sevchik, whatever his name is. Not Sevchik, but Seven or something like that. Forget his name, sorry. Um, it was built by them and then they bought x.com which was his company elon's company and bought a couple other companies became this big this bigger company paypal i'm still waiting to see why people give elon musk credit for building paypal stop it he didn't um but that's what i'm looking at is i'm looking at what numbers are going to work for me i'm looking at right now cardano xrp 
Shiba Inu is still my favorite, still one of my favorites. I always want to look at, at uh, Matic, which is Polygon. And the reason why is, again, I'm looking for things that are connective tissue. I'm looking for opportunities in companies and projects where the opportunity to grow is huge. I'm paying attention to that. So again, Matic, connective tissue, Chainlink, connective tissue. Those are things that I think can actually happen. Something that people are sleeping on, Stellar. People are sleeping on Stellar. Now, the United Nations is moving money or moving funds and distributing them to Ukrainians via Stellar's network. They're distributing to them USDC. So I'm just saying, people are sleeping on Stellar, and Stellar is crazy fast and crazy cheap. So that's another one that I'd be paying attention to. Stellar, I believe it's like XLM. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto. I hope you have a great day. Yes, I will be back. Um, I'm supposed to do something on Sunday. You know, I'll try to do the Sunday roundup. Have a good one. Bye-bye.